Saints defensive end, big time personality, outspoken. What is going on? It's a pleasure to have you on. We've never had you on the show before. Right? Slide in. As many times I'm in LA. And you're in LA out. all the time? I feel like I am. You're a big personality. You're big. I'm you a jump. Big person. You're, you jump through the TV screen. Okay. You've got a rivalry with uh, Cam Newton, which I think is great. I have a rival with anybody in my division, but <laughs> yes, uh, any quarterback is definitely my, uh, By the my way, fixation. Do they? Uh, does it? Is it? Serious question. Although it won't sound serious, is there? Does every quarterback feel different to sack? Are there different? sounds are there different feels are there different strategies i mean yeah of course there's always going to be different strategies when you're facing somebody like uh you know we have in our our division you face uh matt ryan you know as soon as you get a hold of him you know he's going down (laughs) um you know it's not like he can just sort of shrug you off i mean uh that that's can't happen you get a hold of cam newton he can shrug you off he can outrun you he can then as he's falling sling a 60 yard uh accurate Ball, I mean, he's probably the greatest sack you're going to try and get after just because he's strong as Ben Roethlisberger. He's got, you know, accuracy like any other anybody other top-tier quarterback. Um, and then, of course, he can outrun you more than, you know, Russell Wilson can. Do you talk to him when you've sacked Oh, I him? talk a lot. All quarterbacks don't talk back, man. Like, they don't care about us. Like they No, just, I don't think it's that. <sighs> I think they... That's not why they don't talk back, because you can hit a quarterback, and if a guy could hit me, I would make sure I'd be like, Cameron, that was a great sack. You're a fine player. Oh, you going to Andrew Luckett? Oh, oh totally. That would that, be so – it's just overly aggravating. In fact, that's not helping your case, because now I just want to hit you more. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me good job. I'm just like, all right, it wasn't good enough. I'll give you this next one. When you're a great pass rusher, um, you're, in a, you're in a very interesting spot. By and large, I want my players to play defensively in a system – but you're unique. You're one of four or five guys in the league that I kind of want you to go go get the quarterback. How much are you in a Saints system, and how much do they allow you to be Cam Jordan and kind of do your thing on the edge? Camera's on for this? Um, all right, perfect. <laughs> so, you, I mean, when you talk about uh, the mentality of our defense, about how we want to get after the quarterback, um, we've had pieces, you know, now I've got Marcus Davenport. I had Sheldon Rankins, uh, who just got injured last year. So he'll come back sometime this year. Um, you've got David on Yamada. When you're attacking a quarterback, it's because of these other pieces that you, that you can go ahead and go after the quarterback relentlessly. Um, so I've, at this point, I've gone through four different D coordinators on the Saints team. So I feel like it can't be just scheme, right? When you come into the league there everybody wants a pass rusher you mm-hmm. have become the most valuable defensive piece i talk to college coaches they're mm-hmm. like just give me an edge rusher right so it's funny you walked into this league and you were a guy mm-hmm. there wasn't a lot of dis- there wasn't no question by the end of your first year start of your second year it's like okay he's gonna be a pro bowler there's there may be edge rushers that are a bit faster a, a little bigger what separates you? Why are you and Khalil Mack? Like, what is it? It can't just be 40 time and combine stuff. There's got to right. be something innate, Cam, in you that you have a sense, an, uh, uh, your intuition. What is it that separates you? I mean, I feel like I'm more physical than most edge rushers simply because when I got drafted, I got drafted to play the four technique. I didn't get, I didn't get drafted to be play the edge. I didn't get drafted to play a nine to hold the edge and keep everything focused inside. I played. I primarily came in my rookie year, and I was a four technique. I was lined up inside of a tackle. I was lined up on a guard. So I came in for all hands. I was there for all aggression. I was there for all uh, run stopping and, abilities. And you and hand, then was hands like, were everything. Hands everything. So hand placement, um, the mentality of attacking a, a person in terms of just, instead of just holding the edge and keeping my outside nine or you know whatever it is. Um, so my mentality, I feel like, is different because I'm. I, I tell guys all the time, I'm here for the hands. I'm here to reset the line of scrimmage. I'm here to try and dominate my opponent. Whereas you know, guys like Khalil and your Vons have are elite steps, two point stance, uh, and they set an edge, and that's what they're great at. When you uh, we we talked about, <clears throat> you've been well compensated and deservedly so. So Dak Prescott goes in the fourth round, doesn't mm-hmm. make anything for three years, sells a ton of jerseys, keeps the Cowboys on TV. And there is a sentiment among some, like, listen, you're the Cowboy quarterback, no state tax, little hometown discount. We can't pay the quarterback 32 large. Where do you fall on that? Like, I tend to be 
take the money. I can't believe so many NBA players take less mm -hmm. to go play because they like the weather in California. I'm like, you seen the taxes here? You think Canada's bad. <laughs> well, well, where do you, where, how much is salary to you? Do you worry that a quarterback salary, do you think about that? Are you just like, dude, I'm good, pay me? Um, yeah, I'm probably, probably following. I mean, if you watch my contracts go, I'm probably with the, I'm good, pay me situation. Um, I like where I'm at. I like the scheme that I am. I, I love the foundation we have in the facility. Um, it's important to me to not only stay at with one team, but stay at, at base home. I mean, New Orleans has been home for me. So to talk on another person's money or another person's aspect, I can't do it. I would simply say, if he loves Dallas, if he loves where he's at, if he loves his opportunity, then you make it work. And, and at the same time, he's also a quarterback. So he is the face of that franchise. He is, you know, if he says he's unhappy, it's the trip franchise's situation to make it right. So, I mean... Yeah, that's a whole different position. You talk about edge rusher to quarterback. Well, no, I would say edge rusher, don't sell yourself short. No doubt. But our highest paid edge rusher is making, what, 24? The highest paid quarterback's making 35? That's a lot of lettuce. 30, yeah. 24 is a lot of lettuce. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, by the way, when you practice with Drew Brees every day, if, if I'd never seen Drew Brees play, mm -hmm. and I said, Cameron, uh, there's this great quarterback, Drew Brees, games run on TV. What what makes him great? Uh, your first practice you ever went, you'd see how great he is. Um, and it's not in the throws he's making. It's in his preparation. It's in the uh, the walkthroughs. I mean, if you watch him walkthroughs, he's making all the reads. He's making all the throws. And it's all mental. And that's without even throwing the ball. So you just see this guy warming up. And Drew's back here doing one of these. And he's here, here. And he's talking to his receivers. And he's got open dialogue with all the receivers, with all the running backs. He's talking to the center, uh, especially since we have a new center. He's talking to the offensive lineman. He's talking to everybody, seeing exactly where his offense is Communicator. Go. Exactly. So that open dialogue already separates you from most quarterbacks. Is he a barker? Does he get after guys occasionally? Uh, I mean, the, he's, I mean a, he's a competitor. Okay, so that's when fine. You, I mean, when you're an ultimate competitor, you want things to go exactly how you are. But, again, you have guys like Alvin Kamara who – who has his feel, and you guys, we have a top receiver, probably the best receiver in the game right now, Michael Thomas, um, who, you know, is going to have that open banter. And that's what, you, that's what you hope for, constructive criticism. You've had two wild finishes. You won one, you lost one last couple of years, you know, right? Like, like you have the, the, let's see, the Minnesota one was, no, Stephon Diggs was that, that's right. So you lost both, my bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, top of mind. Minnesota mine. Miracle. Yeah, and then Minnesota Miracle. The referees and then, and, and yeah, such. okay. So you, <laughs> you, it'd be, and I said this, I said, I don't know if New Orleans can rebound from back to back, mm -hmm. gut wrenching, gut kicking losses. And Drew Brees, after the game, said something I thought was really important. He goes, I don't want to hear about the officials. I'm, and his takeaway was, we better get over this fast. fast. Do Are you concerned, Cam, or how concerned are you about when you lose the way you lose, there's a, there's a stench to it, there's a stick to it, and it goes into camp? I mean, absolutely, there is definitely a stick to it. Um, when you talk about losing the way you did, but if, as long as you take it in a, in a positive mindset that everything has to come from you. I mean, last year we lost to Minnesota. It was like if we never let them get that close to us, then we'd, we'd be so much further ahead. I mean, we, we hate to put it on somebody. Like we say, you can put it on the referees. Like if you weren't, you know, you're supposed to be the top of your position. If you make the right call, we'd be so much further. But if honestly, we were up by two touchdowns. So if we kept that lead, then we'd never been in the position that we were in. So you got to take it on us. You got to put it on the team. You got to put it on the defense. And our defense is young enough where it's like, hey, we want to go beyond expectations. So – Last season was last season. How do we get better from here? We've got Demario Davis, who's entering his second year with the team, who was a force for us last year. Uh, Sheldon Rankins had one of the, you know, his best season to date last year. David Onyemata was balling last year. Uh, Marcus Davenport is heading into his second season, and you know that first year to second year league. Huge. You look at that our secondary, uh, the, the whole Ohio State secondary that right. we have, plus you know our Utah. I mean, these are all guys going from their second year to the third year. How much better can they get? You know, you've got you we added in Eli Apple. Um, you got Pete, Patrick Robertson, who should be healthy uh, this year. I mean, coming in as a nickel corner, um, there's so much promise to our defense. It's now living up to expectation, exceeding, exceeding our own. Your dad was a Pro Bowl tight end for the uh, Vikings. Living if, if legend. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, my bad. No, I mean, he great, great player. If, if there's one thing dad taught son about the NFL, what was it? Um, he taught me a lot heading into my rookie year. It was uh, – 
try and absorb everything from the greats that you're around. So at the time I was around, you know, Roman Harper, Malcolm Jenkins, uh, Jonathan Vilma, uh, Will Smith. And it was like, what separated them from everybody else? Was it their mental prep for JV? It was like all the mental uh, film work that he did. Um, it was, you know, for Roman Harper, uh, he used to have, you know, guns Friday. He used to work on his arms religiously. So it's, it's just like taking little things away for Will is about just, you know, the constant ability to, to have that grind, that gritty mentality. Like if anything, I'm gonna go get it. And it's not about what everybody else is doing. It's about how much can I get better the next day? So it was all, it was all just taking a little bit of something from each and every grade I could find. When the season ends, how much time do you give your body? Just go uh, have a bad meal and a big piece of cake. Bad and just... meal. I live, I live great in the offseason for that first like month and a half. <laughs> I'm like living, traveling, eating, drinking whatever I want at all times of the day. Like it's gelatinous. I get, <laughs> <laughs> I, I get hefty quick, and then I'm just like, all right, time to be an athlete again. You know. You know that's it. They say for marathoners, they say if you want to stay healthy, you run. Don't run for a month and a half and go eat. Right. Like just let reward your body. Don't 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 go run another marathon. They tell you for a month, go eat. I'm a firm believer in that one. Go travel, eat, enjoy. You know, I went around the world from LA to LA. Favorite country you've ever been to in the world? <sighs> Hong Kong was awesome. Um as much as I love the UAE, as much as I love uh France. Um you ever been to Croatia? No. Heard it's amazing. Prague? Uh no. That's, Finland. Finland's amazing. <laughs> Uh, Finland is surprisingly awesome. My, my daughter just went to Cape Town. Okay. So it's the most, um, most beautiful city she's ever been to. See, I think I was, I was headed to Cape Town a couple years ago, and then they had like a newspaper article like three weeks before I was supposed to go, had like a cheater run through a hotel, and I was like, so no longer Cape Town. <laughs> <laughs> that was just like, you know, this is just like had, had we, you know, we went to the Bahamas a couple weeks ago. Three days later, there was a shark attack. Had that happened three days before I went to Bahamas, would have nixed the Bahamas. Would have been known as Sal. Well, you're well read and prepared in your travels. No doubt. Anytime you're here, you want to come on the show, talk about anything, promote anything, come on the show. We'd love to have you. Just whenever you're in town, just you want to hang out. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Cam Jordan, it's great to meet you. I, I appreciate you guys having me on. We you didn't bet. even get to say him. Hi. That's Joy Taylor. Yeah, you know, her just, brother is. I know. The uh, elite pass rusher, yeah. legend. Who except. had perfect skin. Neutrogena model. <laughs> Is that true? Best skin in league <laughs> history. True, and you're a handsome man. Yeah. The best skin in league history. Right. Not that that means anything. That no. was an <laughs> odd segue. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.